X-rays penetrate body tissue at differing rates depending upon their intensity. Techniques such as DXA or DEXA exploit this phenomenon and use subtraction of multiple scans to obtain estimates of bone mineral density and fat content. DXA, or dual energy X-ray absorptiometry, uses two X-ray images of different energy. A soft tissue absorption image is subtracted from a higher energy bone image in order to estimate bone density to a high degree of accuracy. In this image, we can see the typical mass attenuation coefficient curves for soft tissue and cortical bone as compared to photon energy measured in KEV. If we look at these values for each of these tissue types, at 40 and 60 KEV, we can see the values obtained. Note that while the absolute value changes, the difference between them also changes. DXA exploits this difference in absolute and relative values to calculate DXA images. This method is then used to calculate the density of bone, typically in the femoral arch, lumbar spine and sometimes total hip. A modification of this technique is used to estimate total body composition and fat content, but there are many caveats involved with the accurate measurement of fat content. Sometimes this technique is also called DEXA, but the naming convention changed around 2003 to DXA. The method is still the same. Early DXA scanners used a scanning pencil beam, but in order to reduce the scanning time, a fan beam or CR method is now more commonly used. With such short imaging times, DXA only requires a very low dosage to perform, typically 1 30th of the dose of a standard chest X-ray, 5 microsieverts. For this reason, the technique is not licensed in many countries, and as such, measurement can vary dramatically between different scanners. It is thus important to get follow-up on the same machine if you are interested in tracking change in an individual. Bone density calculation is performed by summing the bone signal within a region of interest. The regions of interest are either manually drawn or automatically computed using a pre-existing deformable model of the human bony anatomy. This bone density calculation is not expressed as a quantitative score due to differences between manufacturers. Instead, it is expressed as a z-score from an age, sex and sometimes ethnically matched average sample mean that is stored in the imaging instrument. The most used regions for z-scores are the lumbar spine, femoral neck and total hip, as these areas are indicative of change in early osteoporosis. These measurements are then aggregated for a total score for an individual. Scores between minus 1 and minus 2.5 z-score are considered normal and it is generally accepted that a score of less than minus 2.5 are indicative of osteoporosis. DXA is not always the best measure of BMD, bone mineral density, as it is a measure of volume, not density. Thus correction factors are needed based upon known norms of the particular machine. Another more accurate technique for this is quantitative computer tomography, or QCT, in which phantoms of bone minerals are placed below the spine. The images are then compared against this. We'll now look at two of the most common sources of error in DXA. As DXA is a single projection technique, correct and consistent patient alignment is critical. One of the most typical measures of bone health is that of the femoral head. If a scan is taken at a skewed angle, this can dramatically alter the estimation of cortical density. It is also important to note that bone and associated tissue pathologies such as osteoarthritis can inflate scores of cortical bone density due to this pathology showing as radio-opaque. Most DXA techniques are not sufficiently sensitive to detect the small signal differences between bone and its associated pathologies.